Right, and and um, and with with your writing process, have you do you still have do you have like a routine when you um, I guess start out to write a book, or do you just kind of I know um, I've talked to other authors and they kind of just say like you know like if you're getting writer's block, you, they've told me writer's block doesn't exist. Like you just need to just write whether you're writing bullshit or dribble, just write, 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 and eventually something will pop up in your head and you'll write and you'll be like, oh, this is it, and then you go with that. Um, do you just start out, like, I'm going to write out, do you have, like, an outline, or you just go, I'm just going to start writing something, and characters' names are going to pop up, and events or actions going to start popping up, and I'm just kind of going to go with it and see where it takes me, or do you generally have a, a set idea of what you're going to start writing about? I think, my, I think my process is pretty common, and, and you know, it's, I, I can't really downplay the process that other goes, other people go through to get to their writing. I, uh, it's, it's, it is an artistic process; it's a, it's a creative process by a person. I can't uh, tell you know other people what's right or wrong for them because they kind of got to find their own way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. For me, my way is is uh, I, I, I not that I don't believe in writer's block. My particular process kind of kind of prevents me from getting there, uh, and I'll explain, I guess. Because I put together an outline. I might have an idea or a concept or a story, but I don't sit down at the computer and just kind of start writing stuff just kind of off of my head. I don't, I don't, you know, without any direction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when people write that way, it's like, wow, I guess that's an interesting way to develop a story. Uh, I worked in improv comedy for a while, so in a way, I could see how you know, that might work. Uh, because, you know, an improv comedy is very cool. You know, you're in the fucking hallway improv comedy in the end of Chicago, Second City. Which, yeah. by the way, is a place I'd like to visit someday. Yeah. Uh, have you ever been there? Oh, I'm not saying, have you ever been to Second City? I, um, I have not been to Second City. Um, is that still there? Is it's, still a it's, place that's there? Yeah, it's it's still there. You can still go to um, performances there. They have different. They actually have different levels, like cheap shows that are, I guess, no names, so to speak, or you know, people that aren't, I guess, uh, but yeah, they're kind of on their way. And the thing with me though is, I've been to other. There's there's so many little. I call them like, uh, I guess, like pull tent comedy theaters where they're like literally a, a super small space and it's just people any anyone it's a lot of people that are just in like taking comedy or improv classes and then like um part of them taking the classes they have one night where they get to actually perform it in front of a paying audience um so it can be like total shit or it can be you know brilliant depending um but there's a lot of places like that one the one i speak of is called gorilla tango theater and uh, it's just real simple, maybe seating 50, and they do improv stuff. But I've gone to a couple, and I didn't... I'm not a big comedy guy, so when I went to it, I didn't find it funny at all. And I was just like, this sucks. And I was like, if they didn't have a, a bar with, you know, a waitress going around taking drink orders, I, I wouldn't have even lasted probably 30 minutes. So, um... So... Uh -huh. Because improv um, is such a, you know, you just kind of jump in the, you jump in the deep end and you just go for it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there's people that are masters out there. I mean, heck, you see it sometimes. I don't know, if, like I said, you're probably not a fan of the TV show called The uh, Players Anyway. But those guys are brilliant. Like, they can come up with stuff super fast from just simple ideas and create a short theme. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, you know, nebulous beginning to it where they just kind of listen and expect things that come to them. And then they create a scene from that. They make those, they make whatever the foundation is built, the truth. Right. And then they don't fuck with it. Now, I, like I said, when people consider them as lighting, they, that's, that's something that, if it works for them, then that's great. But I just feel like there's kind of a, like with improv, where you can have just a total garbage, you know, of scene that's created or, or mm -hmm. you know, a moment. And I just, I don't know if I feel comfortable with me personally spend all my time wasting my time creating a scene that I didn't like or, or, or stories that was developing not the way I wanted to just to get a couple of cool key concepts from it. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, my writing process, you could say, is kind of formal. I might have an idea, and that idea might float around my head for weeks, months at a time. But I've got to actually see an ending, an ending that is like badass to me. Like, oh shit, that's a that's a sweet ending. Right. I want to get that because for me, that's the spark that's the story. So then, what I do is I start taking all those ideas that I have in my head and start to outline. I create an outline. I give myself a direction. Mm-hmm. Um, I start creating characters and creating scenarios and scenes that have had in my head start to make sense for that ending that I want to get to. So I start to uh, build and create an outline. That's what prevents me from the, the writer's block that some writers face. Um, and like I said, I, I'm not discounting it for other writers. If that works for them, then it's great. But this process, for me, I, I don't understand how anybody would not want to have a direction and see where they're going to get to the end and all that light at the end of the film is. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely. Because not only that, because as you write, this is where, this is, that outline is just the foundation. It's not set in stone. Because as I write, that's when other ideas can come up and I can start adjusting the outline as needed. I still have the direction. I'm still going, you know, following this uh, dramatic structure that I've created. But yet new developments as I write, as I follow the outline, come up and I can start writing them into further portions of the outline. Not only that, but when stuff comes up later and I write it, then I can go back uh, and make notes you know, to change things later also. Mm-hmm. So when I get to the second draft and I have it, an outline with a new set of notes maybe to help develop some of the beginning parts to help accentuate the end and build that bigger finish. Um, so that's what I really need. I really need just like the, that direction. That direction will start getting my imagination going as I write. That will help develop the outline even more fully and, uh, you know, get the telling story. Um, and I have the flexibility at this point since this is, you know, this writing business, so to speak. So I'm like, Blitzbox.com is my baby. I don't have to uh, answer to a publisher that wants, oh, you've got to give me 60,000, 80,000 words. Uh-huh. I, I have the opportunity now to just let the story develop. I don't have to put anything artificially into the into the story. I just create the story, and I let the story tell, the, tell itself. If it goes to 60,000 words, great. 80,000 words, great. Or if the story's only told in 25, 30,000 words, then I'm fine with that, too. Uh, people, uh, there's writers out there like Eric, uh, Eric Brown. Uh, Eric S. Brown is a great writer. He's part of, he's one of the people that's, uh, I think responsible for this kind of Bigfoot, the Bigfoot craze in, in writing and even in some of the, the uh, I guess independent movies right now, some of them. Um, he, he's done a lot of novellas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. 